You can perform stability analysis on a Bode plot under these conditions. First, you assume that you have the Bode plot of the open loop system, so just of G of S. Then you assume that the system will be in unity feedback, the negative, and you assume that G of S is stable. So you assume no poles or zeros in the right half plane. There are two stability criteria, gain margin and phase margin. In order for a system to be stable, the gain margin must be greater than zero. The gain margin is the gain of the system at 180 degrees of phase. We'll do some examples to show that. And the phase margin must be greater than zero. And the phase margin must be greater than zero where the phase margin is 180 degrees plus the current phase at zero dB. Essentially, that's the amount of phase that you have less than minus 180 degrees. Here's a little bit of insight into that. If you think about the gain, we have a system that goes like this. So we're putting something in and something comes out and we're feeding it back through. If everything that goes in comes out smaller, then the system has no way of growing because whatever you put in keeps coming out smaller. That's called the small gain theorem and it's related to the gain margin. The other thing you have here is something going in and coming out and then you're subtracting it. As long as when you subtract it, you're subtracting it so it becomes less. The problem is, is that when this phase shift changes more than 180 degrees, 180 degrees phase shift is like a change in sign. So if you put in a positive number here, it comes out negative. Then you change the sign again to subtract it, it becomes positive, you add it back in. You can see it keeps growing and growing and that's related to the phase shift. Here's an example. I've taken the transfer function 50 over the quantity s plus 1, s plus 11, gone into MATLAB and got the Bode plot for this. And I want to know what is the gain and phase margin for the system. So for the phase margin, you look for where the system crosses 0 dB. It's right there. Then you come down and you look for the distance right there. That's the phase margin. That's the amount of phase that you have before the system has 180 degrees of phase. Because once it has 180 degrees of phase, then remember the feedback change is sign and you're essentially adding something back in. So in this case, it looks like we have a phase margin of about 90 degrees. The next thing you, can, you should look for is the gain margin. The gain margin is the amount of gain that you have when the phase crosses minus 180 degrees. Let's see, so the phase goes, well the phase never crosses minus 180 degrees. That means that the gain margin way out here is infinite. The gain margin is infinite because the phase never crosses 180 degrees. This should make sense if we look at the root locus for this system. We have the plant and we're doing it in unit feedback with a gain of k. So the root locus, the two poles, one at minus 1, minus, minus 11, come together in the middle, break apart, and go like that. That means that no matter how much we increase the gain, the system never goes unstable. Let's look at this. Increasing the gain is the same as moving this up. That corresponds to increasing gain. And if you go back to the rules for generating Bode plots by hand, you realize that that's the case. If we increase the DC gain, we essentially just raise the, the position of the gain curve. Well, the phase never goes to 180 degrees. So no matter how far up we raise this, we're always going to have a gain margin that, that's infinite. We're also going to also going to have a phase margin because you see as I raise this up a little bit further, I'm going to draw what it would look like. Well, then I come down here and I look at the new phase margin and it's going to be, oh, it's going to be less, but it's still going to be greater than zero. And because it never crosses 180 degrees, no matter how far up I raise this curve, I will always have some infinitesimally small phase margin. So the system will always be stable no matter what the gain is. And I can see that right from the Bode plot. That corresponds to what I know from the root locus. One last example, the transfer function for the system is given here. You can see it has a pole on the real axis and then a complex poles with a damping ratio of 0.1 and a natural frequency of 10. The corresponding Bode plot is shown here. Let's look for the gain and the phase margin. First look at the phase margin. We look for where the system crosses 0 dB. Uh, it looks like it crosses 0 dB right about there. So come down and there's 180 degrees. So we have quite a bit of phase margin here. So in terms of phase margin, the system, it's good stability. Now let's look for the gain margin. 
For the gain margin, you look to see where it crosses 180 degrees, right here, and then you go up to see what the corresponding gain is. And there's the gain. So looks like we have a gain margin maybe of 10 dB and a phase margin of, I'd say, 160 degrees. This plot also tells us what happens if we increase the gain. Remember, increasing the gain is the same as moving the gain curve up. As I move the gain curve up, the crossover point for 0 dB is moves along this line, it moves out. And as it moves out, you can see that the phase margin becomes less and less. Eventually, we get down here and we can get a gain that's large enough. If we push the whole curve up so it looks something like this, we now have a negative phase margin so the system becomes unstable. The same thing happens for the gain margin. As we increase the gain at 180 degree phase, at some point, the gain is greater than zero. That can re will result in instability. So we can see that by increasing the gain, in this case, the system can go unstable. In its current state, with a gain of 1, the system will be stable, but if we increase the gain, it could go unstable, and we can verify that again with the root locus. Our system has a real pole at minus 0.5, and then complex poles at minus 1, plus or minus just about 10. The root locus for this, let's see, we have three poles, so we need three zeros. We don't have any real zeros. They all must be at infinity, so we've got it a infinity zero out here and then three we've got them here so the root locus probably does something like this well you can see what happens here is that as we continue to increase the gain eventually the poles cross the imaginary axis and go into the right half plane and the system becomes unstable. Now the root locus tells you that that happens, but what it doesn't tell you is what value of gain would be required to make that happen. If you go up to the Bode plot, you could actually calculate the gain required to make the system go unstable. And in this case, if we look at 180 degrees of phase right here, and we go up, we see this gain right here. If we increase the gain by that amount, then we'll have a negative gain margin and the system will go unstable. So it looks like if K is somewhere around 15 dB, the system would be unstable. I'm gonna go through and just verify that. I can calculate how much gain will be needed to raise the gain curve up so that it now has a positive value of gain when there is a 180 degrees phase shift. I calculated the gain of about 15 dB. I'm just eyeballing it from the graph, so I'm not going to be that close. That corresponds to a gain of 5.6, or K of 5.6. I do the closed loop characteristic equation for that with a K. Put K is equal to 5.6. Solve for the roots of the equation, and I get S is equal to 0.34 plus or minus 10i and minus 3.2, which indeed the system is unstable. And you could fool around and do a little bit more careful measurements. You'd find that the actual gain is somewhere like 4.9. So you can see the Bode plot and the root locus relate. And from the Bode plot, you can actually get the gain that's required on the root locus to cause the system to go unstable.